Welcome back. In this Python tutorial, we're going to go over how you can get started in creating maps with the GeoViews library. A couple quick notes. When creating your maps, you can use a plus to put the maps next to each other. And you can use the star to overlay elements onto the map. And we will go over several examples of how to use the plus and the star. If you would like to go to the GeoViews documentation, you can go to this address here. For the imports, we will be using GeoViews, HoloViews, HVPlot, Panel, Pandas, the Vega datasets, Cartopy, and GeoCoder. And one more note on the GeoViews package. For this tutorial, the GeoViews core package was used. For the first example, we're going to create a simple map using the geoviews.feature as gf. And using gf. Dot, we access the geographic features we want to use, including the ocean, land, the coastlines, and the borders. And using the stars, we overlay those features onto the map. And we put that inside the round brackets, and then we use dot .ops to set our options including our projection, the height, the width, and the global extent. And we assign that to the variable m. Let's go ahead and run it. And we get our map. And we can zoom in. And move it around. Here we have a list of other projections that can be used. In this example, we use this projection. If you would like to use other projections, you can reference this list. And here we can view those projections. To see those projections, you can go to this address here. To create other types of maps, you can use map tiles. And we have a list of those here. And here we can see examples of the map tiles. Next, let's go over two examples of how to add text and labels to your maps. In this example, we have added some text. Using the geocoder module, we put in our address. Then we use geoviews.feature as gf using the gf.land dot geometries, and setting as element to false, we create our land geometries. Then we use geoviews.polygons, and we put in our land geometries. And then here we set our options, and then we use the star to overlay the text. To create the text, we use geoviews.text, and then we put in the longitude and the latitude with San Diego Zoo for the text. In this example, we have overlaid some labels onto a map tile. So here we have created our map tile. And here we have created the labels. And we use the star to overlay the labels. When we zoom in, we can see the labels. Next, let's go over how we can plot points onto a map. We're going to use the airport's data frame from the Vega datasets. Here we create the data frame. Then we use gv.dataset and we put the data frame inside the round brackets and assign that to data. Then we use that data.2 and inside the round brackets we use geoviews.points. Then we put in the longitude and the latitude, and then we put in the other elements of the data set. Here we have created the OpenStreetMap map tile. Then we go ahead and set the options for the map. And then we use the star to overlay the points. And since we assigned hover to the tools, we can use the hover tool. 
And of course, we can zoom in. Here we have another example, which is basically the same as the last example. The main difference here is that we're using geoviews.points instead of data.2. So this example is just another way to plot the points. This example shows us how to add a select dropdown to the map, and this allows us to see the airports for each state. You'll notice that the code here is basically the same as in the last two examples. However, we have changed the data in the data frame just a little bit, and then here we have left the state out. And by leaving the state out, that automatically puts the states into the select dropdown. And if we put the state back in, you can see that the dropdown disappears. And all of the airports are plotted onto the map. Next, let's go over how we can plot multiple groups of points onto a map. So here we have created our map. And here we have created the different groups of the plot points. Then we can go ahead and use the star to overlay the plot points onto the map. And since the code is on multiple lines, we can use the star and the backslash to join it together. Now this example shows us basically the same thing as this example. However, in this case, we have created subplots. And to do that, instead of using the star, we use the plus. And we put all the code inside round brackets. Let's go over how we can show population growth over time. We're going to be using the Gapminder dataset and we have added longitude and latitude. We go ahead and use geoviews.dataset and put in the Gapminder data frame. Then we use the Gapminder data.2 and we use geoviews.points. Then we put in the longitude and the latitude. And then we put in the other data elements. However, notice that we leave the year out and that will allow us to use the year with the slider. We create our map tile, and then we join our map tile with the points. And using the slider, we can see the population growth over time. Next, let's go over how we can create a core pleth map. However, before we do that, we need to load a shape file. To load the shape file, we use geoviews.shape.fromshapefile. And then we put in the path to the shape file. And then here we have set the coordinate reference system. The next thing we did is to provide an interface for accessing the contents of a shape file. And to do that, we use cardopi.io.shapereader.reader. And then inside the round brackets, we put the shape file. The next thing we did is we loaded the population data that we're going to use for the core pleth map. And you can see that data here. Now, to create the core pleth map, we use this code here, using geoviews.shape from records. And then we put in the records, the data set, the on argument, the value, and the index. Now, the on argument is the data field in common between the shapefile and the CSV that helps match up the data. The value will provide the values for the color coding on the core pleth map. 
Now you'll notice we have a table here. And we created the table here. And finally, we use the panel library to help us lay out our map and our table. That's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.